Loved by all, Teddy Kolik was to everyone just Teddy. But what was the magic of this man whose love for his people drove him to a lifetime of service? Whose years as Jerusalem's mayor made him a friend of the famous, but whose humility never separated him from the people? Teddy Kollek was born in 1911, and perhaps being named after Theodor Herzl shaped his destiny from the start. Growing up in pre-war Vienna, Teddy watched as the Nazi shadow fell over Europe. On one occasion, he was arrested inside Germany for battling Hitler Youth, and only his Austrian passport saved him from more than just one night in jail. In 1934, Teddy moved to Palestine joining pioneers on the Sea of Galilee. Together they launched the tower and stockade operation that established Kibbutz Ein Gev. Suffering from typhoid, he was sent inland to recuperate. It was then that Teddy Kolik finally saw Jerusalem for the first time. The young kibbutznik had no idea how important the city would be in his life, or how important he'd be to the city. With World War II looming, Teddy went back to Europe to save every Jewish life he could. When the Nazis sent 3,000 youngsters to the camps, Teddy bravely returned to Vienna to negotiate their safe passage to England. During the war, Teddy worked to buy any kind of boat that could carry illegal immigrants through the British blockade to Palestine. After independence, David Ben-Gurion invited Teddy to become Director General of the Prime Minister's Office, responsible for a blueprint for American aid, tourism and ways to absorb new immigrants. Teddy was also involved in the clandestine purchase of three lost Dead Sea Scrolls, among the most precious relics of Jewish heritage. He initiated and directed the Shrine of the Book to house the scrolls, and the Israel Museum next door as a home for national and international treasures. Then in 1965, Ben-Gurion asked Teddy to run for mayor of Jerusalem. Despite his reluctance, Ben-Gurion simply repeated his wish until Teddy agreed. And thus began almost three decades that would fuse Teddy and Jerusalem into one inseparable being. As mayor, Teddy woke every day at dawn and toured the city, noting every pothole, missing street sign and unemptied rubbish bin. And he'd still be the first to arrive at City Hall. I prepared a little symbol, you know, the Lion of Judah and the Wall of Jerusalem and the name of Jerusalem and the olive branch around it because Jerusalem is a city of peace. The city of peace. This is what it means in Hebrew. When he took over as mayor, Jerusalem was a poor, undeveloped, divided city. I prophesied that the city would be uh, united again. I was certain that it would happen. And I have proof of this. With unification, Teddy worked even harder to build a Jerusalem for all its inhabitants, Jews, Muslims and Christians. Jerusalem's people, he said, must find peaceful ways to live together other than by drawing a line in the sand. Peace broker, bridge maker, prophet of the creed of live and let live, Teddy always appealed to people's better judgment. We brought a $50,000 check. And what, to whom shall I make it? Make it to the Jerusalem Foundation. <laughs> To help create a worthy capital for Israel, the Jewish people and the citizens of the city, Teddy founded the Jerusalem Foundation under the leadership of Ruth Cheshin. Together with the Jerusalem Foundation, 
Teddy personally raised much of the money for over 1,400 different projects that transformed the face of the city. Six times Jerusalem elected Teddy Kolik. Six times they chose a secular, life-loving liberal as the mayor of this highly religious, deeply traditional city. Teddy Kolik, there is no dispute that he is the mayor of all mayors and recognized as such throughout the world by every mayor that I have ever uh, met. I feel mainly in New York because of all the monies I raised there. <laughs> and I have a clear understanding with Mayor Koch. She can't raise any money here, but I can raise money there. When asked about a successor, Teddy had an original candidate in mind. Well, first of all, I hope that uh, the city will be so attractive by then that it will attract the Messiah to come. And then we shall have no problems. He will solve all the problems. <laughs> no. And when pressed for some more practical advice, he simply said, that's their problem. Perhaps it was this quality of being somehow above everything, above partisan politics, above religious factionalism, above dogma or doctrine, that allowed Teddy Kolick to pursue the vision of Jerusalem for itself and for all the people of the world. Loved as a cuddly teddy bear, Teddy Kolick was also the courageous and resourceful lion both symbolize Jerusalem forever. <laughs>